I'm Henry Poole. I am the watershed manager for Greenville Water. So my job is to plan and direct all the activities at the watershed at Greenville Water. Um, one of my projects that I have here are uh, goats. We use the goats as a sustainable way to manage our invasive species. Part of my duties here, uh, in addition to invasive species control, is uh, prescribed fire. We're getting more and more into active management at the watershed. So one of the biggest tools I have in my toolbox is to conduct control burns. Um, we actually have a, a burn unit right behind the office here that we're hopefully gonna do um, in the next few weeks. And um, basically what that'll do is um, consume the fuel that has built up in the woods over time. And that's important because um, it kind of um, recycles the nutrients in the, in, the, um, in, the, in the forest. So that's good for, for all the plants. And plus there's other plants in there that we like to reduce. So burning them will actually help reduce the uh, unwanted plants as well. What got me interested in, uh, I guess, natural resources was I, I took agriculture classes in high school and I always knew I wanted to do something outside. So forestry was what I selected as my bachelor's degree that I wanted to pursue. So I went to Clemson and uh, finished my bachelor's degree in forestry there. Uh, got, in, got into uh, forestry as a career and um, Later on, I decided that I was gonna go get a master's degree to help me because I became a supervisor after a number of years and I figured I'd go get a, a master's degree in business. So that has actually helped me uh, in my uh, supervisory duties as well. In forestry, we have uh, what's called a certified forester. Um, so I've, I'm actually a certified forester. And depending on what career track you might wanna take, um, you may have other certifications. Along the way, I've picked up a certified arborist certification. So I used to do urban forestry. So I do uh, retain that as well. Um, and depending on what other stuff that you may or may not do, you may either have other types of licenses that you're required to get in natural resources. My love for the outdoors was really my driver for my career um, choice. So if you like to be outside, um, forestry or some kind of biology degree, just gonna, you know, like natural resources uh, is gonna be a good career choice for you. Um, a lot of field work, data collection, but I just remember going outside uh, during the middle of the day in high school when I took my agriculture classes and I was looking at everybody else stuck inside doing work. So that really appealed to me a lot um, and actually helped me make my decision on what I wanted to do. Where we're at right now is on one of our fire breaks in the watershed. So what, first of all, I want to uh, talk about what is a fire break. So a fire break is what it sounds like. It's a break of the fuel in the woods so the fire stops when it gets there. And this could be a wildfire or this could be a controlled burn. Now what you're looking at behind me is our fire break for a planned controlled burn that we're getting ready to do here at North Saluda. And you'll see the, it's fairly flat right here. You got some trees and then you have the, 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 the mountain laurel right there, the really thick green plant right there. That's a lot of mountain laurel and that stuff is really flammable. So what we did, we mowed it down right here close to this road. And uh, when we get ready to conduct the control burn, um, we're gonna start right here in the leaves and let it back into that. And then it'll keep going further, further back. A lot of planning, a lot of work ahead of time, a lot of um, things like smoke management. You have to make sure that the, you have the right weather to do this. Um, you need to make sure the, the wind is right, the atmosphere is right. So there's a lot of science involved in this. I have to look up the weather the, the relative humidity, the ventilation rate. So there's a lot of science involved in pulling off a prescribed fire or a control burn as we like to call them now. So why are we even doing this to begin with? Why are we putting flames in the woods? That may seem counterintuitive. So we wanna manage a healthy forest. So in order to have a healthy forest, uh, there has to be some kind of dynamic of change um, at times in a forest. Everything recycles. So leaves fall on the ground, they decay, they eventually turn back into the soil. The prescribed fire actually helps this process along and that's why we're doing it. In addition to doing that for ecology's sake, it's also uh, a measure of safety. So we had a great big fire a couple years ago at the other watershed, at the Table Rock watershed, and um, it burned a good portion of that. So actually when you do a controlled burn, you're actually burning it on your terms instead of mother nature's terms. So that's why we're doing it. We're actually reducing that fuel which reduces the likelihood of a wildfire. So we want to 
manage our forests to be healthy. So if you have a healthy forest, you actually will have healthy water. So if you maintain the invasive species, you know, control the invasive species, uh, make sure that, you know, we burn the fire on our own terms rather than Mother Nature's terms, all that adds up to a healthy forest. So that's, uh, that's the end game at Greenville Water is managing the watershed to produce a healthy forest, which means healthy water. Well, obviously I love being outside, like doing this today is great. Um, it's really fun to, to plan these types of activities out in the watershed to actually think about something, plan it, uh, make sure, you know, we had to mow this down, actually seeing the work progress. That's always fun to see progress. Um, and then go back. Um, we have another burn that we did two years ago and you go back and look at, did I actually get done what I thought I was trying to do with the fire? So going back and looking at that and evaluating that progress um, is really fun for me. And plus working with the people that I get to, get to work with at the watershed is always fun too. So at Greenville Water, we have different levels of employment. So we have uh, our, our entry level position is known as the maintenance protection worker. I mean, we start those, those folks off at about $30,000 a year. And um, the next job up the, the ladder of uh, the career ladder is called a team leader. And uh, I think those are about $35,000 a year. And then we have a caretaker, which is over the team leader. And they're, they start out around 40, uh, the low $40,000 a year. And um, then you have my job. And um, I actually started a few years ago, but uh, my pay grade is, is higher because I'm in charge of everything. So you could make you know, anywhere up to uh, like $80,000 a year uh, as you progress up your career ladder, um, not just here at Greenville Water. We have a lots of different opportunities to progress. Um, my job requires a degree, um, but not every job requires a degree. So if you're thinking about getting into natural resources, you don't always have to have a degree, but as you progress, different opportunities may present themselves, which may require a degree. And here at Greenville Water, we actually have a program where you can actually go to school and Greenville Water will actually pay for some of your uh, tuition costs if that's your choice to, to branch out into something where you want a degree. So I'm standing right now in the confluence of the Callahan Branch and the North Saluda River uh, where we let the water out of our reservoir. So right here you have water outside the watershed coming into the water that's coming out of the watershed and this mixing right here. So why am I standing in the middle of the water, you might ask. So if you look closely at this water, I just wanted to take a minute to highlight the difference and, uh, of, the, of the two different types of water. So over here, you can tell that the water is really, really clear. And over here, you can see that it's not as clear. It's, it's uh, got turbidity in it. So turbidity is a measurement of how clear the water is. So in water resources at Greenville Water, that's one of the things that we're concerned about. So the water that's in the reservoir, um, we're releasing some of that out into the river because you know, we have to continue the river. There's fish, fishermen downstream and other people that use the water downstream. So we do a release out of our reservoir. Um, but I just wanna take a minute to highlight the two different types of water here. And actually this area, we're planning on doing some stream bank restoration to hopefully help this turbidity out. So this is a little bit higher turbidity than what we'd like to see. Ideally, this is what we would have everywhere. Uh, everywhere there's a water, a water body, it would be clear. Yeah, so a typical day for me is I end up going to the office, which is at the water plant, with the water plant. <clears throat> so, you know, like most administrators, you wanna check your email first and just kind of figure out where things are. Um, but then I like to try to go out at least uh, once a week um, and follow up with the guys on where they're at with the projects. Like this is one of the projects here. I have somebody that's coming out and doing the turbidity uh, measurements in this stream. Um, so, uh, you know, it could be, I could be outside all day or I could not be outside all day. It just kind of depends on what the most critical thing for me to work on that day is. So the, the higher up you go in any organization, uh, the less you're actually doing field work and that's just the nature of the job as you progress in your career um, but it's always fun to go out and just do follow-ups with the guys and, and try to figure out what's going on if I need to help them with anything that problem they may have run across or if I can you know order some supplies or get some parts for a piece of an equipment that might have broken things like that that's a kind of uh, what I do from day to day 
Okay, so uh, my job as the watershed manager, the scope is very big, okay, if you look at it as a landmass on the earth. So way back in the watershed where the water first starts coming down the rivers and streams, it eventually comes to the reservoir, which is behind this dam right here. You can't see the lake right now, but behind this dam is a lake that's about a thousand acres. Surrounding the lake is, another, is, is the land mass of the watershed, which is about 20,000 acres. So that is really big. So as the water rains and flows across the land, accumulates into the streams, and the little stream becomes a larger stream, becomes another larger stream, and eventually, eventually runs into the lake, okay? So what you see here at this building is our release out of the bottom of the reservoir, which is very cold water. And one of the reasons why we do that uh, off the bottom is because fish like cold water, especially trout. So that helps fish out. But as the water comes out of the pipe inside that building, it goes through this pond and it settles down. Just behind where this little waterfall is here, this little waterfall is actually called a weir. It's a, it's a way that you can measure the volume of the water coming through, coming through a weir. So you can't see it, but behind that concrete wall where the, where the, rail, the green railing is right there, there is a, a staff plate there where my staff every morning comes out and they take a reading where, where, how high the water is right there. And that translates to this notch right here, this square notch where the water's coming over the little the weir right there. So they can actually figure out exactly how many millions of gallons a day the water uh, is releasing out of, the, out of the lake. So the water keeps coming and it goes under this bridge and it continues down south through the rest of Greenville. And uh, we, uh, we manage our, our forest in a, in a healthy way. Uh, that all translates to very clean water. Even the water that we don't use, which is this water it's, that we release going through the lake, uh, it continues going down through the rivers. So that's a little bit uh, of the scope about what I do. So another aspect of my job as a watershed manager is to provide security for the drinking water for the city of Greenville and all of our other consumers throughout the county. So we actually control access to the property. It's no trespassing as our sign says. So that's a big job for a 20,000 acre parcel. So what we do is we actually have routine patrols that we go on. So up and down the, the paved road here and even interior into the watersheds on our interior roads, we actually go and patrol those as well. So we actually take that very seriously because in order to provide high quality water, we have to control the access to the property. So that's one of the biggest things you can do is protect the water source. So that's another big part of our job is to try to make sure that you know we maintain this as, as limited or, and no access. So here we are at another project that I have and this, this project is a forest health project. So uh, we're in the middle of my salamander uh, plot and uh, why are we even talking about salamanders you might ask. Well salamanders are an indicator of forest health. So uh, in terms of ecology um, which is, I guess, an important part of STEM uh, careers. Uh, you need to know biology, um, and part of that is ecology. So salamanders actually respond very quickly to their environment. So if there's a change in their environment, uh, there, there may be uh, an adverse uh, effect to the salamander. So what we're doing is we're trying to go through and just sample our uh, watershed in certain places to find out what kind of salamanders we have. What I've got here is a, a tree cookie that we cut and salamanders are very reclusive creatures by nature. So sometimes you come out here, you might not find them right away and it's still kind of cold. So they may still be down deep and not active yet, but sometimes you'll flip one of these cover boards over real quick and there's no salamander here. So uh, what I do is rake the leaves back and uh, I've got an earthworm right here and then cover it back up. 